tiny radiators, cop of three, heat pumps work fine in older buildings. Can heat pumps heat a normal building with no insulation upgrades and normal size radiators? Well, it just so happens that we've got a heat pump in a building with cavity walls, not filled, and normal size radiators, and we've got monitoring equipment, so I can show you exactly how expensive or cheap it is to run. So let me show you what we've got. We are heating with our heat pump. Shouldn't have the door open there. This building here, this 1960s building, has cavity, like I said, unfilled cavity, has cladding around the front, but the cladding doesn't add any insulation. The cladding is, it's just a, a big gap behind there. So it's just for visuals, it's for aesthetics. It's a building, 1960s building. This is our heat pump. You can't really hear it running because they are quiet these days. And that shouldn't go in this way. Now, this area here is actually heated by our air-to-air -air heat pump. Uh, this area is usually about 16 degrees or so. It's 15.5 at the moment. So it doesn't heat this area. It just heats the upstairs and this kitchen. I'll show you the radiators we've got installed. So this kitchen radiator is larger than probably an average, but not ginormous considering the size of the room. So it heats this area, normal double glazing, normal back door, just a normal house. Nothing special about it. Not new build by any means, like I say, 1960s. There's no radiator in this hallway. Like I say, this is essentially like a flat here. It was actually gonna be a flat at one point. No, no radiator in here, which you would normally probably upgrade to if you're gonna have a heat pump. This radiator in here is a single panel, single convector. So not even a double. And as you can see, it's not even as wide as a window. You'd normally match it to the width of the window even when doing just a, a normal gas boiler. In this room in here, we have a shortened radiator, not as wide as the window. So probably much smaller than in your typical house, I would say. Double panel, single convector. Very small little radiator. Smaller than most radiators, smaller than average, I would say. In here, we haven't even got a radiator, we've got a tower radiator, as opposed to having like a, a kilowatt or two output, that's got about 300 watts, so it's tiny. Uh, very normal though. Probably slightly small for this bathroom, having said that. And in this room, this room does have a double panel, double convector. However, again, been shortened, not as wide as a window, and very short. It's only about 400 or 450 high, which is abnormal also. So an abnormally small radiator in there. And also, last but not least, my office, which also has an abnormally small radiator that's single panel, single convector. So we've got 200 mil of loft insulation, which is very normal. We've got cavity wall unfilled with ins uh, insulation, very normal house. And as leaky as a 1960s building, we've got a loft hatch up there, which probably lets some, some leaky air through. And very, very small radiators. Here is our monitoring. So we can see at the moment, we are in December the 22nd today. You can see up there. And you'll see, this is the this is a weak view. So uh, the outside temperature at the moment is 1.9. It is minus one this morning. And the cop for this window, this window here, cop in window 2.9. So the week of December the 22nd, starting at the 15th, 16th, for that week, very cold week typically, 8.1. Dipping, 3.9. This is outside temperature, obviously, I'm highlighting at the moment. 5.9, minus eight. The current cop at 3.1 outside is 2.85. But for this week, in the end week of December, we have a cop of 2.9, 2.99. Now, what that means is for every kilowatt of electricity we put in here, oh, sorry, 1100 watts here of heat energy, our thermal energy is 4.170. And that essentially means we're getting out three times more heat than electricity we're putting in. That's what the COP is. So the COP is the efficiency at any one point in time. So if I say here, we put in 1.6 kilowatts and the thermal output was 5.4, we know that that point there was round about a COP of three. The SCOP is the average over the year, seasonal coefficient of performance. And with this monitoring equipment, Open Energy Monitor, I can select any sort of point in time. So I've got a week here of 2.9 in this window. The all-time COP is 3.4. Bear in mind, this has only been recording in the colder months. We haven't really included this, the middle months. So we've got a COP of three. However, we've got teeny tiny radiators and we've also been only recording in the colder months. That's likely to go up. And when it's also gonna go up when we get probably cavity warning station one day, but more importantly, upgrade our radiators for normal size radiators. Even, even boiler radiators aren't typically this small. 
So that just really goes to show you normal house, midwinter, copper three, if you're paying 15 pence per kilowatt hour, getting a copper three, you're only gonna be paying five pence per kilowatt hour of heat. So actually you can make them run just fine. The difference is the insulation design and control. You don't need loads of extra kit installed. If you get loads of extra kit installed, it generally brings down the efficiency when it's simple as possible to drive up efficiency. Minimal zoning, uh, minimal uh, hydraulic separation, and good quality controls like you get in Wiesmann's and Valence. That means good weather compensation. And we'll do a video for consumers actually, how to fine tune their um, systems to get the maximum cops uh, and heating engineers just because it's easy get gains to have just by playing with some settings. Yeah, that's just an overview. Tiny radiators, cop of three, heat pumps work fine in older buildings. Oh, I should also add, that's with a newer unit. Units that are say four or five years old, they're not touching the new stuff coming out. The new stuff is loads better. And there's an upward trend with uh, SLC pumps. What you thought of them five years ago, even if you thought they were good, isn't correct now. They're better now. And they're going to be better in five years time again. Whereas gas boilers, obviously as good as they'll ever get. And being 90% efficient and paying four pence means you're probably per kilowatt hour paying around five pence uh, heating as well. So yeah, watch your space. I'll show you what happens when we replace the radiators, how the, the scop and cop increases and show you how, in fact, we'll probably use normal size radiators, really. Um, we'll just make them slightly bigger than the teeny weeny ones we've got. And I'll show you how much it costs to run a very, very normal, normal property. Cheers.